Ever since it was released, R3.0 on Warlock has been one of my favorite subclasses to play, but it hasn't always been super strong. Personally, I find any build that is great at ad clear while also having a decent uptime for abilities to be super fun. And when it comes to Arc Warlock, Ionic Traces give nearly an infinite uptime on all our abilities, while we also get increased damage and ad clear through Arc Souls for us and teammates, the ability to permanently stay amplified, roaming damage resistance sources, and by using something like Fallen Sunstar, the energy we get back doubles. Compared to options like Void and Solar, I never really thought Arc Warlock had a place to shine until now. With Season of the Deep Artifact mods, the brand new mods from Lightfall, and even mods new to this season, Arc Warlock is easily stronger than ever. And I can say the damage output and survivability of this build actually shocked me when testing in some endgame activities. Even while underpowered, the healing options and damage resistances makes it super easy to stay alive at max health. The full mod setup also makes it insane for ability spam. You can constantly get your grenade back in a few seconds where ionic traces feed into our armor charges, throwing our grenade refunds energy directly, and spamming our rift for constant arc souls and healing will also give energy back as well, on top of all the energy and healing we get from orbs of power and ionic traces already. Before we hop into the build, we are super close to 75k subs on the channel, so if you guys haven't already, make sure to drop a quick like and sub down below. Starting things off, by looking over at Fallen Sunstar, this exotic is super simple. First off, it just doubles the amount of ability energy that we get from Ionic Traces. At base, an Ionic Trace will grant 12.5% grenade energy, 12.5% melee energy, and then 15% class ability energy each time we pick them up. So by doubling this, we're now getting 25% for both our grenade and melee, and then 30% for our class ability. So either way you look at it, just 4 Ionic Traces grants all of our abilities straight back. Second to this, allies nearby will then also be granted ability energy from Ionic Traces that we collect. They're only getting 10% per ability they have, but it's a nice additional support feature of the helmet. Since our build is obviously going to specialize in making these ionic traces all over the place, this exotic is by far the best to use on the build for ability spam, so let's go over how we can actually make these in our arc subclass. Starting things off, our abilities are pretty much going to cover all the ad clear we could ever need in the build, so having a super that offers ad clear is pretty pointless, and honestly Chaos Reach is one of the highest total damaging supers in the game while still offering pretty good DPS, so I would always make sure you're running Chaos Reach, especially considering some of the mods in the artifact that we have this season, which I'll be going over later in the video. This build is also going to lack a bit of healing, so for that reason I think Healing Rift is the best Rift option to go with, Empowering Rift isn't going to offer much to the build overall, healing will help keep us alive, we do have good damage resistance sources, but overall like I said, we don't have too much healing in the build, so Healing Rift comes in clutch. For our melee, I personally think Ball Lightning is just the best choice. It's almost like a mini Pulse Grenade, which we're also using with this build. The other Chain Lightning melee ability also requires you to be near enemies to use it. Even though it's pretty strong and has a good cooldown, having the Ball Lightning is just better overall, in my opinion. Lastly, for grenades, I tend to always use Pulse Grenades. I think these are right now the best. Even on Warlock, Storm Grenades are also pretty strong as well. Storm Grenades got more of a heavily nerf when compared to Pulse Nades on Titan and with Touch of Thunder, so Storm Nades do work if you want to change things up or run these instead, but I almost always prefer running Pulse Nades. For our first aspect, we are running Electrostatic Mind, which is how we make the bulk of the Ionic Traces in this build. With this, any ability final blow, which is going to be our grenade, melee, or even class ability, which I'll go over in a minute, is going to generate Ionic Traces. With this, we're also making Ionic Traces anytime we kill a Jolted or Blinded target, and picking these up is going to allow us to become Amplified. Second to this, we are running Arc Soul, so that anytime we place our Rift down and walk through it, we are getting Arc Souls. This obviously works for our teammates as well, and while Amplified, these Arc Souls are going to shoot faster because they become supercharged, increasing the DPS they deal, and also their effective ad clear. So now with this, by effectively placing our class ability down and getting kills with Arc Souls, we're also creating Ionic Traces. Spark of Resistance is our first fragment to offer a 25% damage resist with this build. This does have the condition that you need to be within 15 meters of three or more enemies, and it was recently nerfed so that this only lingers for two seconds after those conditions are falling off. Spark of Magnitude is great, especially with something like a Pulse Grenade. This extends the duration of its lingering effects, so for something like a Pulse Grenade that works off of a Pulse Count, this goes from six total pulses to eight total pulses now. 
And then with this, Spark of Shock is also going to increase the effective damage and add clear our grenades do because they now apply Jolt. So that increases the damage directly to targets that have Jolt applied to them and effectively the add clear and AOE because Jolt has a much further radius. Lastly, on this build, Spark of Discharge is pretty clutch because it allows weapon final blows that are arc to also create ionic traces, which is super nice. In case any of our abilities are not around, we can use this to create some ionic traces and then get those abilities back from scratch. These are all the mods I'm running on the build. Feel free to screenshot or pause the video here if you want. I will also have a dim link included if you just want to click on that. Arc Siphon allows arc final blows with weapons to create orbs of power. Since I mentioned we're using these to also create ionic traces, this is a nice synergy for the build so we can also make orbs. Ashes to Assets and then Hands On are also going to increase the super energy we get as we get grenade final blows and as we get melee final blows, which happens super often since we're spamming abilities with this build. Firepower is going to now allow any grenade final blows we get to also spawn in additional orbs of power. Bolstering Detonation allows us to get increased class ability energy back whenever we deal damage with our grenades, which happens a lot, so we pretty much always have Arc Souls to offer for our team. Lastly, anytime we throw a grenade with Grenade Kickstart, we're getting a certain amount of energy straight back to our grenade. This is going to depend on how many copies we're running. So in this build, we obviously only have one copy, and then after that, it's going to depend on how many armor charge stacks we are currently at whenever we throw our grenade. For additional healing, I thought Recuperation felt best on this build. Anytime we collect Orbs of Power, we are now getting 70 HP straight back. Stacks on Stacks synergizes great with the build since it allows us to pretty much constantly maintain a higher amount of armor charge stacks, which feeds directly into Grenade Kickstart so that we throw that grenade with higher armor charge stacks, essentially guaranteeing that we get more energy back every time that mod is used. Elemental Charge is also super nice on the build. It's a brand new mod this season. As we collect Ionic Traces, we have an escalating chance to also grant ourselves Armor Charge stacks, and then these should double through stacks on stacks. And with that, it directly feeds back into Grenade Kickstart, so we keep our grenade up more consistently. Lastly, we spam our class ability to keep getting healing in different locations and refresh Arc Souls. So Bomber is going to give us 20% of our grenade back each time we do this. And then Outreach does the exact same thing, 20% for our melee ability. And then lastly, I am running Powerful Attraction so that any orbs we create in a vicinity will automatically be collected and applied to us, giving armor charge stacks and healing us through recuperation instantly anytime we use our class ability. There are five arc mods in the seasonal artifact that you might consider useful, so I'm going to go over what these are and which ones you should actually be running. First up, Electric Armor just increases your amplified timer. This is useless. I had it on, but you don't really need this. Thunderous Retort is super useful. This gives a 30% increase in the damage your super deals, as long as you cast your super while amplified or while critically wounded, so absolutely make sure you're running this. Likewise, Amped Up offers a 30% damage resistance in PvE anytime you're amplified. So this stacked with Spark of Resistance and then also the base 30% that you get from Tier 10 Resilience is going to drastically scale up to help keep us alive. Despite what everybody says, Lightning Strikes Twice is borderline useless. This only offers a 130% additional grenade regen, but that 130% scales off the Tier 3 value. So it's not the Tier 10 value. At the end of the day, you're really not getting that much grenade regen back through this mod. Lastly, I do think Shock and All is pretty useful. Arc Final Blows while Amplified will summon a Lightning Strike, Jolting Targets. It does have a 5 second cooldown. It's nothing insane, but it's better than not having the mod. That is it for the build. As I said, I was pretty shocked that Arc Lock actually felt half decent in endgame PvE now, at least from like a survivability standpoint. I do definitely want to try this out in some GMs next week. I think it will be okay, assuming Arc Surge is on as a modifier, but if it's not, I feel like it might struggle a bit in damage. It's definitely a cool and different way to play the game, especially having Arc Souls handling a lot of the damage output and add gear we have, but let me know your thoughts on Arc Lock in the comments down below. I do also stream a bunch over on my Twitch, so a link to that and my Discord server are both in the description below as well. As always, have a good one, guys. Peace.